everybody. Welcome to another edition of Poe Community. I'm Mike Garboy, and I'm sitting here with Jonathan Morrell from Bulging Gift Baskets. How's it going, man? Oh, hi. I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks. I really like the new jingle. The music is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Podcast 2.0. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I definitely uh, been working on that. I got uh, downloaded some audio uh, mixing software that I haven't used in years, and actually put together that pretty easily so more and more i want to get back into audio producing so oh, was... video works too you're doing great thank you thank, thank you. you for having me though no I'm problem it's been a long time coming we've known each other for a while now yeah we have the same kind of logo going on so the city skyline like it's yeah. in vancouver so that's really like cinched us together as businesses that's great yeah. i just love being here at the fountain Head network so it's a pleasure to be on the podcast too thank you thank you yeah uh you've been a member here for a while oh, yeah, og we, yeah og <laughs> and and you and your company bulging gift baskets um you've done multiple multiple gift baskets for us for people around the space great job with what you do it's always uh you as personable as they can get with just a little bit of information that people give you you guys seem to just know how to produce something like really really immaculate and great so yeah. tell us about bulging gift baskets thank you man so uh we started five years ago i had to look it up um we started down in yale town where we lived uh, and it was by invitation only just for real estate agents it was people that we knew we were doing closing gifts um, and it was an on-call basis, uh, I started working for one of the big e-commerce companies and um, got our website whipped up in an order and started doing it all e-commerce. Uh, and that slowly grew because people would call in and just get random gift baskets for whatever they need. And we le we we've really leaned into the business market. So um, lots of professionals, lots of entrepreneurs, like the Fountainhead Network members, uh, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, anybody who needs has gifting as a part of their business. Uh, often reaches out to us. Um, people can visit the website. It's bgbv.ca uh, and check out the gifts. There's tons of customization you can get online there. But a lot of, like I've kind of leaned into and enjoy people calling in and kind of giving me a bit of a challenge because if I have the time, I will totally rise to the occasion. Um, so we get a lot of like phone calls for themes for special events, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, running for five years, I've gotten to do a lot of varied different work in the business and the last two years we've really focused on getting into the community and especially like my passion is working with other entrepreneurs um because just the grind so finding ways to just support each other and working in the tri-cities is really a special treat because it's a bit it's a bit easier to be approachable and and meet with people than it is kind of in the big city when it was when we were in vancouver based but we do support uh, people and businesses all over the Lower Mainland. Like, it's really easy to get things anywhere in the Lower Mainland of BC um, and across Canada. So that's the business in a nutshell. Uh, we've grown exponentially over the last five years, and we just keep looking to grow. We're coming up to our busy season for Christmas, so I'm really excited. Um, and I've got some new products coming up. So that's the big picture of Bulging Gift Baskets Vancouver. That's awesome. How did you get involved in that industry? My part, so uh, it's a team effort. My partner, Ari, um, was the guy who knew all the real estate agents. So he started, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll help. Like on the weekend, let's go shopping and figure stuff out. When I started working for the e-commerce company, that's when things really took off. So I took over the back end and all the organization and uh, Ari did all of the production and the creativity, which was really cool. Things kind of switched around. And with us growing, we like as entrepreneurs, you do everything yeah. typically. Um, and so I've taken over a lot more of the construction and the creativity of the baskets. So that's how that came about um, and how things developed. That's awesome. So like, what kinds of things do you put in these gift baskets? Like it's oh, so good. many different kinds of things, obviously, but good question. So when we started five years ago, we were dead set. We wanted to support BC businesses and we still do. So I'd say about 80% of our product, like the actual physical uh, giftware and food is based in BC with the rest of it coming from across Canada. So we really wanted to support our local makers and look after our communities and make it a national kind of product. Um, of course, like, you know, coffee beans and chocolate come from other parts of the world, but it gets imported here and made by local makers. So we work with uh, some really great names. Uh, they change all the time, but we've had like since day one, we've had Thomas Haas chocolatier in our basket. So really high quality chocolate. 
Um, uh, Skippy's Kettle Corn is another really popular one. There's some familiar brands like you'll see at the store as BC products. There's Hard Bite Chips. Uh, and then we have some really small uh, companies. Well, they're big companies, but we all start off small. But Melifera Bees is like a Vancouver like uh, honey producer that has hives in Lower Mainland, which is really neat. So all the products in our business are kind of like handpicked. Um, you can definitely see some in stores, and we're super happy when our businesses, our partners get to that scale because we all want to get there. Um, but a lot of them are kind of small business, uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, so that's what makes up our baskets. That's awesome. Like, obviously you say you love working together with small businesses, right? And I've seen you help other businesses out, like on, on a personal level, like, and I've seen how far you'll go to like, always give a basket to if we're having an event or whatever. So like, how important is like, obviously this last couple of years have been rough on small businesses, especially. And I know like you guys, I guess would be considered a small business. So like, sure. how have you been affected and it, how has it been like, it's, it's tough taking care of yourself, but I've seen you try to help others during a time where it's hard to, enough to take care of yourself. Like how has this last couple of years been for you? Yeah, no, thank you for asking. Um, it's been interesting. We've always said we look after relationships, like client relationships. So for those people who do give gifts as a part of their typical work, like we're an easy call. It's been really interesting the last year to get so many orders that are personal, like a lot of gift well, get well gifts, that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of touched my heart, uh, sending those out. Um, but when it comes to businesses and what people need, for me, so the last year in the pandemic, like a lot of people started up home-based businesses and everybody's been there kind of thing. Uh, but it's definitely a grind for us. We've been there and we've scaled up and we kind of just have our product ready to go. So when I do hear of opportunities at events, we work really closely with the Tri-City of Chambers of Commerce and with the Fountain Network and a few charities. And we always get um, outreach from organizations to ask us to be a donor. So because we kind of have stuff around, it's pretty easy for me to say yes. So, and especially in the last year, we just keep things moving. So um, we've done a lot of donations. We have helped out a lot of small businesses where things need. We've been involved in the queer community, both in Vancouver and the Tri-Cities in doing donations and uh, helping out with events. So that's really where, where we want to try and give back. We're kind of through the struggle of being a smaller business, being around for five years, we kind of can keep moving. So that's how we've kind of gotten through the last year. Uh, our business in particular, because it's only been two of us, it's been a very small bubble. Uh, we have followed all of the protocols put out there, um, especially with any employees or, or people that came in to help. But we've just stayed small, stayed true to ourselves, and just tried to help as much as we can. And again, going back to just like improving relationships, being there for celebrations, being there for like ensuring people are feeling better. Those have been a lot of really touching moments for me over the last year. So that's how we got through last year. And we look forward to, I'm sure everybody does, but we're looking forward to next year and bigger celebrations and in-person celebrations. So yeah. And all the work that you've done uh, in this past couple of years, any kind of uh, reaching out and helping out of people, they remember that it's, it's going to be, uh, we talked about this before we well, like started recording, but just, I feel like business relationships are way more personable now. You want to deal with the people you trust and like and deal with them because money is more scarce for a lot of small business owners. If they're going to be throwing their money in any direction, it's people that you trust. It's people that you love working with. It's people that you support. Um, and I think more than ever, small businesses are just supporting one another right now. Yeah. You could be in the same industry and in the past, that's considered competition. A lot of people in the same industries right now are putting it aside and just realizing that like everybody was hit so big, like they were hit in a huge way in the past couple of years. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, even medium to big size businesses were hit hard, except for like the big billion dollar ones. But like they were hit kind of hard because you still have employees that you got to pay when your business is probably making a quarter of what it was. True. And, and it's like, the more employees you have, the more you're paying. So if you're not making the money you're used to making, you're either looked, if you lay off, you're looked at like an ass. And if you keep them on and you're looked that better, but you're, it's, 
you, money dwindles no matter how much you have of it if you're spending more of it, right? It's true. I love that you bring up the human aspect is you're right. Like, although I love I love a good Starbucks drink and it's sad to close locations, it's more sad that people had to be laid off. There is a human component to all of this. Um, so, yeah, no, that's it's been a tough year for everyone in business. And although you kind of look at the big guys and be like, OK, well, your profit share has changed a little bit. It's affected smaller businesses. And I'm just privileged that we've been scrappy and be able to stay open. A lot of businesses have closed over the last year. So um, it's a testament to our, it's a testament to the people who buy from us. It's our, our customers. It's a testament to people who are discovering us new um, that I think we have a really lovely product. So um, it's just been such a wildly entertaining, not wildly entertaining year. It's been like an interesting year of lots of new experiences for us. That's where the entertaining side comes from. Um, and I'm not saying by any stretch that 2020 made our business a success in any means. It definitely made sure we were busier and we were ordering more product. We were getting more product out. We were taking on new courier companies to help us out. But in all of that, I always went back to our core customers and our partners and our community partners to make sure everybody was doing okay. So, um, I really like, like that's the aspect before the e-commerce company I worked for, I worked a lot in social services with neighborhood houses in Vancouver. And so when you start to meet people, and it's exactly what you said is people on the internet who find, who Google a website, you Google gift baskets, there's a ton of options come up. Those people want what you're selling and it may be a one-off thing. Whereas hopefully you build a relationship where people begin to need what you're selling. And for us, we're there to enhance your relationship, either with family or clients, whoever it may be. So those people who need what you want and want to come back because they've had a really good experience. That's always the important part. Um, and we've really done a darn good job at really customizing our gifts. So on the website, you can just pick a gift and add on a whole bunch of stuff, however you want, because that comes from me. I'm a texter or a website person if i don't if i can avoid calling in i'm good yeah. like self-help bring it on uh so we provide that for some people but some people like i still have clients that call in give me their credit card number we do it all over the phone and i'm happy to do that as well so we've had to adapt and change to the styles of how people buy because i thought it would be totally online e-commerce we'd become this big corporation of just people ordering online and all these orders come in, but really it's technical and we've been going to where our clients are. Um, but we do make it easy. So that's the one thing I've wanted to say is if anybody ever wants to try BGB, but sorry, BGBV.ca, um, like go check out the website. Like it's really important to go see what we do and then call me because <laughs> if you have a specialty, cause you need a certain color or you need a specific add on, like I'm there, I'll, I'll totally assist you. Mm -hmm. But, um, it's important to see what we can offer first. Um, and then it's easy. Like we whip up a gift basket and typically get it shipped out next day. And then you get phone calls about how much they enjoy their their gift basket. So I don't know. It's kind of um, an interesting gift people choose. Uh, for a while there, I worked at a craft store and people would come in trying to build them. And I could totally empathize and give them tricks on how to build them. But when you go and build your own gift you're paying two to three times more because of the markup on everything. Yeah. So even if it's not our company, but it totally should be our company because we're great, but go order a gift basket because generally, even with the price that you're paying, they're going to get better pricing on their individual component stuff going in. So you will always generally um, get a better deal going to like a professional who does your gift for you. Uh, and they're, there to help you out. Um, I'm definitely there by phone. Give me a call during the week. I'm happy to like chat and figure stuff out. We're coming up to a busy season. And that's my one thing for anyone doesn't like for sure call us, but anybody looking to order gifts for your company, especially if you're like, oh my gosh, my boss just assigned me. I have to order gifts for the department. Just call early, like whoever you're getting a hold of. Um, Cause I don't make the components that go in my basket. So I have to reach out to my suppliers. And some of my suppliers are still artisan small batch suppliers, and it takes them a week to make up 144 or something for me. So um, it's the the holiday season, the end of the year, is all about balancing timelines and expectations and getting people what they want. So 
we're definitely looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. I know you have a bunch of returning customers though, because like I, I've seen it, I've seen your gift baskets and it, it, nobody really thinks of them until you almost either get told about it or you just order one uh, like on a whim or whatever. And then you realize how good and personable they are. And like, why wouldn't you go back for different birthdays, different occasions? Sure. Why? So I could see you probably have a bunch of returning customers because of how personal you are, how great services, the great services that you give, the, the product that is in the baskets. And like you said, how the markdown compared to doing it yourself is, is huge. Sure. So like you, like, like, guessing you get a lot of people returning just realizing how good they can be as gifts oh i appreciate yeah i definitely appreciate that i've got some people that are really tight and actually have my personal phone number because we've talked so much and but those are the people that they call and it's like a repeat birthday gift for so-and-so you did last year it's like oh yeah they like purple and how are they doing so you get to really know them and their families which is really neat or you get to know people in their companies which is really neat so it's always wonderful to see returning customers come back and for i do have a couple that were just their go-to gift service and that's that is especially when it is really special for me to do something custom um because you're not going to get the same stock gift you're not going to get the same thing you got for christmas or your last birthday or whatever because there's gonna be a special add-on um like whatever it may be it could be a stuffed animal or it could be an add-on of flowers or a special sparkling wine like we have a lot of those options built in the website, but just a simple phone call and I email you an invoice and you like do your Apple pay. It's like two, two clicks. You have a gift sent. Like the world we live in is pretty impressive, especially for gift giving. Um, I had somebody two weeks ago call, like it was the same day delivery. Like, please know there are some charges attached. Like I'm not magic, but same day they need an anniversary gift for somebody in their family and we totally hooked them up with flowers and a gift delivery and got it all done the same day so when i can move heaven and earth and make stuff happen for people and i have that availability i totally do i also have a lot of, it's like i have a lot of people to call on that will totally like be pinch hitters for me when need be but those are like i said so a lot of times i like a challenge um and that's the really rewarding part of the work really it's not it's not the dollars, it's not the number of orders in a day, it's those memorable orders that you kind of get and those people who come back. Um, it's also those business relationships. I really like working with businesses because it's generally a straightforward, straightforward kind of plan of approach. So I'll tell you, I do some really cool, I like, so like if the Fountainhead, we meet up, I think I've done this with Aaron, to be honest, but we meet up, we're like, okay, so your colors are orange, right? Like, let's play off orange. So you're going to get a gift basket with an orange bow and your logo on the card. And they're like, oh, you have like swag, you have coffee mugs, give me a couple of coffee mugs. And whenever you order, I'll put a coffee mug in, right? Mm -hmm. So we just have a standing order going. So you call or text me, because easy on both of us, and just say, hey, I need a gift basket sent to so-and-so, Right. And you know it's going to have an orange bow in your logo and a mug and your standard thing. Sometimes people give me a budget and they just trust me to roll with it. And you, they're always happy with the gift. Like, yeah. I don't think in five years I've ever had a complaint about a gift basket because people are like, great, a gift basket. Awesome. <laughs> and all you got to tell me is what you want the message to say and ideas and concerns. Like, do they have an allergy? Do they have, like, is there something they prefer that we should be thoughtful of? And done, right? Yeah. So as a company, um, that's why like real estate agents, these kind of people love us because they're busy. They just get stuff done, a text message and then Apple pay to pay your bill. Like you're good. <laughs> so um, we definitely cater to a lot of the market from the general public, single person, all the way up to, to decent sized companies. So that's, that's wicked. And I, you obviously you said your busy season's coming up Christmas. Yeah. And all the other holidays that happen throughout the year probably are like your busy, busy times, Valentine's days, the, the, like. Oh my God. Whatever. Google. Can I tell you? So people call with interesting holidays that maybe I personally don't celebrate. So my partner is Jewish. So Hanukkah, we can look after, like, there's a lot of stuff. I'm, I was raised from Catholic. So Christmas in the bag, like, but we've been called with specific holidays and we're like, can you tell me a bit about this? Like, what do you want? Like, what's important to you to have in there? So we have the client tell us what is important because it's family tradition. And I totally Google things like colors to use, colors to avoid. Like we are very careful and do our research about traditions for people. So we don't send a gift that's not appropriate, but it really helps us to learn. Like there's a whole series of blogs coming out about different traditions around the world. But 
I'm sorry to cut you off, babe, but yeah, Christmas coming, busy season. We look after Hanukkah. We did one Kwanzaa gift in the past, um, but these are all, like, really cool things that come up that uh, we look after. So how do you, like, what, this is, I worked in the industry, both me and Aaron did, where it was very holiday based like we'd get yep. rushes and you're always until pretty much the last second of you being able to get shipments out you're working 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 how do you after that enjoy those holidays do you do you like do you just like lay back or oh man <laughs> last year we were still shipping stuff out with one career that would work with us on christmas eve and i rented a truck and we were doing deliveries christmas eve um, that's pretty part for the course. And then Christmas Day is like recuperate kind of thing. And then I think we still had deliveries Boxing Day and beyond just because people didn't care if they were late. But um, again, this last year was hard. We normally like the Vancouver Christmas market. Uh, so we set special times to go and enjoy our special events. And we set, set aside special times to go visit family and that kind of thing. But outside of that, it is full tilt assembly and production and receiving and shipping. Um, I remember last day, one day last year, this was the highest production we've ever done because we were dealing with multiple companies with hundred piece orders per company. And cause we were like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's, let's push ourselves and see what capacity we can actually run at. We had a five ton truck, which is one of those with a big lift gate pull up to our front door to do pickups. So that was sending out all their gift baskets. We're loading gift baskets there. And an 18 wheeler, I kid you not, in the middle of nowhere of Coquitlam pulled up to do a delivery of skids of product we'd ordered because we forgot how much things are like on a website when you order 30 cases of something you're like, oh, yeah, so we scale we have the capacity to scale up really huge at Mother's Day and Christmas and then we shut down and we're exhausted for a few day, days and then we go and clean up. Um, but enjoyment of the holidays is definitely a scheduled event. Uh, Christmas Day, I think, is one of the few days we actually have blocked off. Um, but yeah, we're just coming into it. Thanksgiving, it's another day we're blocking off and spending time. And then I think we might go see a haunted house in Halloween. But we're already, like, getting ready for Christmas 2021. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, I'm already seeing it. Actually, if you go into a Walmart, it almost seems like they're promoting Christmas more than Halloween right now. It's <laughs> true. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of places are definitely on that track. But it's interesting, though, I have this debate with people. Um, so there's a big chocolatier, right? Let's just use an example. No, no shade. They're a great chocolatier. I love them. Um, they're purple, right? Yeah. But they like they already have their Christmas stuff out, which is great, because guess what? They own the factory and the employees that make the stuff and all of the people that I kind of know who are like, oh yeah, I'm ordering from this chocolatier that's purple. And I was like, great. And your clients are going to love that. It's delicious. Next year, let's have a chat because although I might not have my stuff out, you can see what we did last year. You can give me a price point and we can send a really cool gift that's themed or tied to it, right? Um, and that's my whole big thing, especially when working with smaller or local producers is we all kind of have to, to get geared up for our production and kind of build up waves so i always commend my suppliers when the when the d word comes up when they're like oh we have so many cases at our distributors warehouse i was like oh my god congratulations <laughs> like that is awesome you've reached capacity where you're ahead of your production and you're stockpiling it it also means they have good shelf life so that's always good and you have a distributor shipping your stuff out like pat on the back for you because that's awesome yeah. like you're not because we all started in our spare bedroom, right? Like every small company started in a garage, yeah. right? And so that's what I'm saying. It's like you're finally, you're finally busting out and getting bigger. Like BGBV, we actually are renting a second space. So we do have space. It's not public. You can call me if you ever want a tour. But uh, we do have our own dedicated space, which was a big thing for us. And now immediately above, there's another space we're taking over for November and December. And oh my gosh, like... That's huge for us, yeah, but we yeah, need yeah, it. We're treating we're treating ourselves so we're not stacked up on top of each other, assembling gift baskets and you know cellophane. You yeah. need room to do cellophane is all I'm saying. But <laughs> yeah, so it's um again sorry to loop back because I go on tangents, but Christmas is gonna be exciting. Is all I can say. Um, can I talk about some of the new cool stuff we're having? 100%. So um fruit cake are you like are you a fan i mean a fan? I could, uh, uh, like what one are we talking about because like, is it the ones with like all those like 
Christmas. Yeah, the, the glass eight cherry. It's, it doesn't have the heavy thing of marzipan on top. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Bon Chaz Bakery, which is a parallel of Uprising Bread, they're local, right? They're supplying fruitcakes to us this year. So mm. they don't have the marzipan top, which some people are for or against, but fruitcake, like classic Christmas things. So those are coming in for our baskets. Um, uh, we're getting hot chocolate bombs. Like that was a really cool, like everyone bake hot chocolate bombs. It's a little hard shelled chocolate that you put in some warm milk and it dissolves and you have hot cocoa. So mm. like those are some new things. Um, Lots of Christmas chocolates and cookies coming in. Um, we have shortbread with glassade fruit, which is like a personal favorite of mine. Um, another really cool thing is we naturally, just by the really great product line we have, can make our stuff. You can either make a vegan gift basket. So like when you have those friends who are vegans, you're like, what the heck do I get them? Because you don't get anything <laughs> I get. Yeah. yeah, vegan, huge. All whole section on the website, don't even have to call me. Just pick a vegan gift basket. We'll set it up for you. Yeah. And there's a little checkbox on any gift that you can make it gluten free. Because again, those people that have sensitivities or celiac, like, I feel terrible. But it's like, it's serious. If they get a bit of gluten, like gastrointestinal distress, I'm just like, we will look after gluten free. Yeah. Like, I have products that are certified gluten free. I can actually make any gift basket on my website gluten free with just a few substitutions between yeah. the products we have. So, if you ever like, I'm going to say check out Instagram because I think I have a video or there will be one shortly after I say this, but there is a tour of our spot and we just have shelves of stuff. And that's why we can make pretty easy substitutions because we have it and we know the stuff we have. But, um, so those are some Christmas products. Those are some. Um, like dietary preferences we look after all year round mm. and then yeah please if there's ever a really serious thing like a nut allergy like put it in your order notes or call me like i want to make sure your recipient is okay with all the gifts they get so um another thing i want to mention is if anybody ever wanted to try us uh just sporadically like just we have a we have a satisfaction guarantee like if your custom, if your recipient ever calls, it's like the gift basket was great, but I'm really not too fond of this. Like, we'll send them a gift card. Like, we'll make it happy. Like, please know we're about making a good relationship and connection or celebration, right? Like, yeah. but I only say that I only put that out there is because we've never had a problem that I know about. Nobody's ever called me, but I will put that out there to the universe. If your recipient ever calls you, it's like, mm, I wasn't a big fan of the gift. Let's send them something different. They can pick. I will give them a gift card to my website. They can pick whatever they want. So it's really kind of like, in comparison to some of the bigger sites, it's really kind of risk-free to come order from us. And it feels nice because we're a small company and yeah. we use other small companies, right? So Yeah, it's kind of like a lot like what we do in a way where it's we're just a small company trying to help other small companies. Yeah. That, that's it's like, it's a... It's a I never did it before I started this company. I never was out there helping other businesses. And it's a really nice feeling when you see them grow, especially um, seeing people. I think you said something earlier where you saw like a lot of people have rather laid off. They got into into what they want to actually do. That's the weird blessing of COVID, if you want to call it that, where it's just like it's taken people if they were laid off or whatever, it's like, what do I do with my time now? Oh, maybe what I wanted to do with my time as a, for a living before but I couldn't because I had to pay the bills. And yeah. now it's like, okay, if I'm going to be on CERB or whatever, I can go and try and do what I want to do. And the amount of people that I've seen grow businesses during this pandemic, just because of the pandemic, essentially, it's it's crazy. It's it's And it's great. Uh, we Actually, quite a bit of our members are in that boat where it's just like yeah. they either work for somebody in the industry that they wanted to branch off and do their own or completely different industry that – they're passionate about let's spin this around on you because i just have been working here all morning like desk space is at a premium there's still desks but yeah. like it's been very happy to see how many people are actually coming and joining the space because again i've been here since the first few months yeah. and a lot more like permanent desks so you're absolutely right those people who are following the dreams like you need a space to come and do the grind and get your shit done because yeah. sometimes we get home or a coffee shop doesn't cut it so it's a really nice at atmosphere to be here um so yeah, you have to be proud of that too. And you support all of the members that are here. So we're yeah. all very appreciative of you and Aaron and Rupert and whole darn family. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that too. Like we just want to make it a home instead of like uh, an a typical office. So if you think about entrepreneurs, a lot of them, 
left their office jobs or whatever because they hated working for somebody and they don't want to work in a typical office it's not they'd rather be at home what we're trying to do is make it kind of a professional um personable workspace where it's like you have you have you communicate with other people that aren't your co-workers because yeah. it's a co-working space but it's not your co-workers that there's always beefs there's mm -hmm. always like this person doesn't do this or that. but when you're all a bunch of different companies coming together where it's just like all that matters is your relationships are together it does not matter what work is getting done between one another like unless you're working on that project but it, it's it's just be building a community of people going through essentially the same stuff as a small business, all the hardships and stuff. We want to make that easier. It's, yeah. it's not it working. Uh, maybe like you said, everybody starts in the garage or their extra room. Yeah. That's great. If, if you want to come into do, doing something <laughs> into a place like this, it's, I, I it could be more comfortable, but, why we have different kinds of memberships and day days a week memberships is because sometimes it's good to get away for a couple of days of the week, just out of your house yeah. to work in a different environment, or you can do it full time. And what we've, if you see, like you said, you saw what our desks are looking like now. I think we actually, we planned on our, what we are dedicated desks are ones that are full time. We planned on just having them on the, like kind of the outer areas of the, of our uh, Westwood study and those are all full so full and you've had to move them around because everybody has yeah. their fancy like standing desk yeah. there, so they're bringing in their own equipment and you're repurposing those as additional full-time desks which yeah. is really cool to see i'm terrible with citing um quotes but i'm great at using them uh but it's uh it was uh entrepreneurs are the only people who will work 60 hours a week for themselves so they don't have to work 40 hours a week for somebody else yeah or maybe even 80 hours i forget what it was <laughs> but it's a lot. that's it so having a place like this just to like come and like get a small project done or just get like work as much as you want and at any hour of the day even if you're night owl i will trust me one day i will get the 24-hour package and you'll see me on cameras here in the middle of the night because i'm a total night owl yeah um it's great. It's a great resource in the community, and we're so happy too. So it's definitely um, uh, we're a twenty four hour facility, and what we've noticed, and I saw, I went, was, went to school for music production. When I worked and did that that for work, it was starting my day at ten p.m. and working yeah. to like four in the morning, and then going to my night, my like my morning job really tired but this that's just what i did did and that's what we the people that are here at night it's a lot of people from media that either do it as a side hustle and that's their passion or is this that's when they get their creative juices flow for some reason is in the evening when they're alone or just quiet in their own little realm but being able to come here at 10 p.m there's usually a few people hanging around but being able to like have this space this huge 7,000 square foot space at your like fingertips to come in here and work um in a professional yet comfortable environment that's like really our goal like we just want people here it would be nice to have people here at all hours of the day like oh my god uh we used to actually have a member that was here all hours like I come in at 9 a.m and he got here at 2 <laughs> on payroll security yeah, guard yeah 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 oh, it definitely that's a member that he moved on because he moved away from a different city but he was our nighttime security like he only came in at night and it was perfect uh but come back moses <laughs> oh yeah i remember moses. <laughs> so last year it was my only claim that i can ever been a night owl that much was so last year at chris's peak because we were stupid and took on orders we fulfilled like every order got fulfilled on time but so i worked at the craft store i was managing there i'd come home at 10 or 11 at night from that job i would pack gift baskets till about two in the morning crash wake up at eight for our first career pickup and then i think nine or ten for the second career pickup and then basically sleep all day until one or three in the afternoon and then go back to my other job so lesson learned I've left all that job and I'm only doing bulging get baskets Vancouver, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. That's why I was like, bring it on. And that is kind of the dream of an entrepreneur is be able to do it full time. Um, means you also have to be very good at like time management and planning and goal setting. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's feeling really good to be full time entrepreneur now. So it allows a lot more capacity to do the personal shopping people ask for and, all those special things um, that are going to make the gift just that bit better, you know, so a bit more 
crafted and personal than just something you order off a website. So yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, I guess we should uh, wrap this one up, but I uh, like. Uh, Tell everybody that's listening here, like you said, our website already. Yeah. So it's Bulging Gift Baskets Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, we shorten the website to make it easy. It's bgbv.ca. Or you can do bulginggiftbasketsvancouver.com if you really like to type. But <laughs> bgbv.ca. It all works. And then you uh, social medias? Uh, at Bulging Gift Baskets Vancouver. And phone number is 604-363-6691. Again, it's Jonathan. Give me a call. I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, customize a gift basket thanks jonathan it was great having you today um I, yeah it's been a while i wish like, yeah. i can't believe i haven't had you on yet and i'm really happy that i had you on because yeah you guys are great what you uh give to the community and all the gift baskets that you that people are buying for me are amazing everyone i've seen have been like jealous when i've seen it when it's not for us or <laughs> not for somebody i know i'm like i, I want all that in there especially you did one for my nona yeah you did one for my nona all this pasta and good italian stuff and that rings rings like close to my heart so it's Sweet. yeah i i uh love what you guys do and i love having you as a member here so thank you so much for being a guest today and Thanks for being a part of the Fountainhead. Thank you, Mike, for having me. It's been a true pleasure. No problem, man. Thank you guys for watching. This has been another edition of Poe Community. I'm Mike Garboy. He is Jonathan Morell. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.